How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another blue collar video. Um, today's going to be a little bit different. I know we were talking about the 67 Dodge again, trying to do the fuel tank. Uh, we're going to postpone that yet again. Uh, hopefully this won't take very long. But somebody came in and, uh, and brought a bike here. It was a family friend. And uh, he's having two problems. One, it wouldn't uh, run right. It wouldn't start at all, I assume. So we're having some fuel carburetor problems. And then uh, the second thing is the rear brake will not work. The front one will. So we're going to try to figure that stuff out today. Let me give you a little walk around real quick. It's a pretty neat little bike. It's a Cleveland Cycle Works, which I thought, I don't know too much about them, honestly. I don't work on bikes that much. But it looks good. Um, just a little one-cylinder deal, not too heavy. The guy's getting a little older, so he doesn't want anything super heavy to try to pick up all the time. But regardless, you got some sort of debris coming from there. It looks all really new. Um, everything on it looks new. Everything works, except for those two things. Okay, just like before, we're going to be doing the uh, passenger side, driver side, just so you guys can tell the difference. So the passenger side here is uh, what we're going with. It's got a uh, master cylinder line coming down. Uh, let's see if we can figure out where exactly it goes to the front caliper, and then there should be something coming... To this rear uh, brake here. This is also fluid. It's not cable. So we're going to have to see if we can find what's going on with it. Maybe there's something. No fluid. I might crack the line back there and see if there's any fluid. Um, of course, we'll have to check up here and make sure there's fluid in here, which it should be because this brake works. So who knows? Maybe it's a two-stage system. Maybe it's just one. I'm not real sure. Uh... I do want to start with this though because I feel like this is going to give me the most fits. My trouble with brakes is just about as bad as anyone else's. But yeah, it looks like that line comes up underneath the frame here. Straight to that little doohickey my bit and I don't even know what the hell that thing is. And then uh, it should... What is this here? I don't even know what this is. I'm not sure. But it looks like that's where that's going right there. So that looks like another master cylinder for the brake so you got the front one you got a rear one maybe it's its own independent master cylinder i'm not really sure all right so first things first i'm gonna make sure we got some fluid coming out of this bad boy and that was i did some looking that was a master cylinder for it when i sit here and i push it you can see that fluid is coming out so maybe there's either air in this line because of how they bled the master cylinder and the brake line and everything, or that caliper, the caliper could be bad. Not really sure. We'll have to figure that out in just a second. We'll do some more uh, troubleshooting and uh, we'll get right back into it. I just don't want to bore you guys with all this because I don't really know what it is yet. So we'll be back when I figure it out. All right, so here we are. We gave up on the brakes for a minute because the... Uh, I went and tried to bleed them and they were bleeding rough, you know, fine, I guess. Uh, but that, yeah, we'll come back to that. I started working on the carburetor here and I took off this air filter. And what I did is I turned the key on and I went up here and I started it for a minute. And I was watching in here. Matter of fact, I can probably do it right now. Watching that carburetor right there. You guys don't see any fuel, huh? Well, me either. And there's supposed to be fuel. But the reason there ain't enough fuel is because it took the line off. No, it was doing the same thing just a second ago. Let me go ahead and show you. So here's what we got off of it. These lines are supposed to be clear. Kind of like this one. This one's a little faded anyways, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I went ahead and I blew this filter out. It didn't look too bad. I put some parts cleaner in there or some brake cleaner and blew it out. There might be a little stuff in there. But I don't have this size filter. And I can't run it without it. So we're going to try to reuse that. Now in here... This thing's all gummed up. Now if you can see in there, of course I'm sure you probably could if I wasn't angling it that way. There's a bunch of stuff in these, in these hoses here. And when I open the tank up, that's what came out of it. So I'm hoping that, that there's nothing really crazy in that tank. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and show you again. It kind of came out real cruddy, just like so for a second. And then shut it back off after it's clean. So I'm hoping if I can throw the filter back on here, get some lines up it should 
flow into that carb all right unless inside this carb is all gummed up which i don't think so it looks new and i'm pretty sure he shut it off maybe not we'll figure that out in just a minute i'm gonna go ahead plumb this filter in line get this thing ran up here and see what we can get well don't you just hate it when you get everything on there and then come to find out this line is too small for up here even though it fits everything else it's pretty crazy isn't it we're gonna have to figure something out there got to make it work somehow at least for right now to test it okay well it looks like a lot of stuff that i was looking into is already in this box you got the old carburetor which i told you guys about but i didn't know that pretty much the complete like lower master cylinder uh like all of the lower brake stuff is here you got the brake was reservoir mass cylinder whatever this thing is i'm not even too sure what this is but it's already here so maybe they changed it already and still don't know i'm not sure a bunch of other stuff in here which i don't really know too much about um, we're not really worried about spark or anything we're just kind of worried about Break. and I was worried because for a second sorry to say worried so much worried, blah, 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 blah. there it is out of my system now we got this fuel line the one I was using was a bit too small which is unfortunate but this looks about the right size so we can't mess this up or I'll have to go get more there wasn't any on this little carb there was some sort of like a what do they call this the line that lets the fluid out whenever it's too much or it's been sitting it's like an evaporation thing yeah that anyways not sure what this thing is. Not gonna worry about it right now. We're just gonna worry about these two things. Um, everything else seems fine. I am kind of worried about the brake stuff considering this looks like it was already changed out. But we'll see what we can do. Back to the fuel. Okay, I went ahead and tested this line that I just took out of this bag right here. And uh, it's weird because it's coming with all the stuff that it needs which is kind of odd it's almost like he knew what i needed to do and just asked me to do it for him that's kind of weird anyways uh i tested here cool i tested over there kind of loose but we can make it work good news is i think this filter that i had i can actually use now is it too long maybe should we cut it down we might depending on if it'll go on there as far as it needs to go i'm thinking we could cut this piece off here should be fine but we only need a little bit here to there i'm worried that this might actually be too big but there's really no way to tell until i figure it out and i can't do it with two hands so one second all right so this did go on here unfortunately it probably won't let's get back over here it probably won't go all the way down on this one it'll just go to the top because of the uh, diameter of this uh but what we're gonna do is cut it put the filter in one side and then bring it back over here to this little piece there and uh, that's a fuel inlet for this carburetor uh, I don't know if I told you guys but I'm pretty sure we're working with a single barrel I don't know if that's obvious to everyone or not but I'm gonna go ahead and say it uh, we're just gonna go ahead and splice everything in real quick we are gonna have to use zip ties on that because the diameter of this is not the same diameter as that which is why when I plumbed it the first time this line wouldn't go here because it's too thick so I'm gonna go ahead, save you guys some time. I'm gonna do this off camera and I'll show you guys, but this is the only thing we're gonna use zip ties on because the clamp is not gonna be uh, tight enough. Okay, I got all this stuff plumbed in here, but when I flipped the fuel over, this thing started leaking out of that uh, zip tie area. So we might either try to tighten those up with the needle nose right here, and if that doesn't work, then we might actually have to try to find a clamp we can put on there which is going to be really hard because it's in a really crappy place. We might have to pop these off quick and see if we can do something in there. I'm not too sure yet. We'll see. Uh, the brakes kind of throw me for a little bit of a doozy. I'm not really sure what's going on. I called the uh, owner of the bike and I was like, hey man, uh, you know, has this stuff been changed? He said yes. So the reservoir has been changed, the little pump master cylinder whatever you want to call it is uh is changed as well the lines have been changed caliper looks new so i'm kind of i don't really know 
I'm gonna take the caliper off, which might turn into a lot of work. I'm probably gonna have to pull the whole back of the bike apart. Uh, but we'll have to see something, because uh, I don't know, if it's all been changed, it should be new, it should work, unless there was a faulty part, which you never really know. But uh, that's what I might do after I fix the fuel problem. We might uh, take the, or at least attempt to take the rear wheel, slide it back, whatever we gotta do to get to that caliper, pop it off and see if we can get it moving. And then, uh, and I don't know, see if we can get it to work. Right now I'm gonna fix this fuel leak and then move on from there. All right. So I went ahead and I tried to get these needle nose in here and they're just, it's not in a good spot, okay? I'm gonna have to see if I can pop this off here, move that out of the way just for a second and then reset it back after I get these tightened down. What I might do while I'm doing that is, uh, is put a clamp on it so maybe that'll help. Um, really hoping that this filter is doing its job. Looks what it looks like. Looks really clean over here, dirty. I looked inside the tank, which story of my life, it's rusted pretty good. Ugh. Which you guys can't see down in there. Let me see if I can get my phone out. Story of my life, you know what I mean? Sometimes I can't stand rusty tanks. I see why they went to aluminum and plastic, even though a lot of us don't like it. Uh, it is what it is. Let me see if I can yeah can you guys see that in there it's pretty rusty if i can get that there it is yeah anyways pretty rusty in there we're just gonna have to see if we can get by with what we got i don't think it's giving him too much trouble just yet i'll have to let him know um we could try to clean it but it's just gonna get rusty again so we'll see what he's gonna want to do on that for right now let's see if we can figure out the small stuff sure it's a good thing that i'm working inside today because I'm pretty sure it's starting to rain soon. We might have to do this thing two-handed. This thing looks like it's spring-loaded. Let's see if I can take this off real quick. There's just these two screws and probably the spring behind here that's making it do some weird stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, it wasn't spring-loaded. It was just one screw, you pull it back, the other one's holding on the apparatus to the cable here, and it was just jiggling around because the cable wasn't happy, I guess. So. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can tighten those a little bit. I really don't want to leave it that way, um, but we might have to. So, see if I can grab a hold of you. Oof. Slap the camera. Ah, we're going to have to put a different uh, thing on there, which ain't too big of a deal. We have one. It should be. Get it out of there. Can you, can you let me have it? Can I have it? I can't express to you how hard doing all this one hand it is. Like, you think it's hard? Two hands. Try doing it with one. I think this one will do it. Um, we're going to have to see. Huh. Let me go ahead and take those off with the knife and then get right back. Okay. Well, I tried putting that on there. And that little clip right here wasn't tight enough. So now I got an idea. I'm gonna use a little line that would go on there just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it inside of the big line there. By the way, if you don't have yourselves one of these fancy little knives here, you might wanna get one. They're pretty good. Now, that should give us the right diameter that we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on here, and put this clamp back on here. It should be just fine. So I'm gonna have to uh, do that with two hands again. And we'll be right back to where we were. Perfect. It'll fit just fine. Okay, well, make sure that when you go to try to put the clip on this uh, apparatus here, you send it into oblivion, so you'll never see it again. Then you'll have to go get a zip tie and use a zip tie like you didn't want to do because you sent the clip to oblivion and it can't find it. What was that? It was a joke, something about Narnia. Ah, yes. It was sent to Narnia and I have no idea where the fuck that is. Perfect. All right, back to what we were doing with fancy old zip tie here. Great. Would you look at that? It worked just fine. Perfect. Now let's see what happens when we turn the fuel back on. God bless. Fuel? Oh, well, it's coming out of there. 
Don't tell me you're clogged up. That'd be really unfortunate. Maybe it is. Ugh. I just put all this on here for you to get clogged up. That's insane. Okay. Gonna have to unclog it now. We get a little pig stick in there and waggle it around a little bit. And this should come right up. Well, just like Fortune would have had it, I went ahead and took this off and it just started pouring everywhere again. So, I think what I'm going to do now is turn this key on. Make sure she's a neutralis. Uh, okay. Let's see if there's any fuel coming through here. We got a kink. That could potentially be why. No gravity feeding stuff going on here. Well, we're gonna have to see if we can fix that. See what's going on, maybe shorten that up a little bit. Yeah. All right, here's the problem. The fuel's on, but there's no fuel coming through unless I take this line off. So if I pop this line off of here, the fuel will flow. But when I put it back on, it will not. And I, I just don't understand why it's like this. I mean, I know that isn't enough to flow. It could be gummed up, sure. If I get a pick and come over here, just not flowing right. Maybe there is something wrong with this petcock thing that we might have to take apart. Uh, but if I put fuel on the other side, of course, you'll probably want to hear because this thing's louder than it's... I don't know. This thing's loud. You put some fuel down the carburetor. You want to test it. Turn the key on. Turn, turn your key. There it is. It's loud, it does its job, but it's not getting fuel to the carburetor, which I find weird, because it's all gravity fed. The only reason it should stop is if it was, you know, gummed up. But the thing is, <clears throat> it's not, I mean, I don't, what do you do with that? I don't know. I think what I'm gonna have to do is just take the tank off, take it outside, see if I can get a lot of the fuel out of it, and then try to, clean it maybe I'm not too sure maybe take this off see what's going on in here we'll have to see so I think I'm gonna take the tank off uh, just really focus on getting the fuel to the carburetor today and then we'll try to figure out what's going on with all the brake stuff like I said later so let me uh, let me try to take this tank off however it comes off here and we'll looks like a bolt there probably one on the flip side and probably something up under here yep here and probably on the other side too yep We'll take that off meet you out there. All right. After spilling water uh, and getting some in there, this is some of the stuff that started coming out of the bottom of the tank, which could be a lot of our problem. So what I'm going to do is pop this little uh, fuel shutoff valve off and uh, see what's behind it. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. There's still a little bit of fuel in here, but we'll see what we can get away with. Let me go ahead and pop this off real fast. All right, I just used an adjustable and it popped off loose enough. Let's see what this is gonna look like. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty messed up in there. We're gonna have to flush the tank out. Might put some vinegar in it and let it sit. Um, this could give us a very serious problem, but we'll have to see come tomorrow because it's gonna have to sit overnight. So, I think that might be it for today. It might stop us right in our tracks just because I'm need to do a little research on the back of this bike before I tear it to pieces uh, on how I'm supposed to be moving this stuff back and out of place uh, it looks pretty simple I think I might get like a sharpie and mark these points here so I know where to bring it back to but it looks like this adjusts it back for I guess the tension for this um, chain maybe over time not too sure uh, but we might mark that I just need to clear just enough 
to get that little Allen bolt out of there and that Allen bolt so we can take that caliper off and see what it's about. Um, but we might actually wait till tomorrow to do that. We're gonna have to charge a battery at some point because this thing's not liking being started, 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 started a thousand times. And uh, yeah, anyways, let's see if we can clean some of this out and uh, look inside, see what's going on a little bit more because it didn't look too got awful bad in the top of this thing. Uh, but the bottom is, is pretty freaking bad. All right, so I got a couple picks here. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to scrape a lot of this junk out. Which there seems to be quite a bit in there. I'm also really worried about this petcock here or shut off, whatever you wanna call it. I used to usually call it a petcock, but probably gonna need two hands to clean all this crap out because man, is it bad. I think this thing sat for a while and then put a, uh, put some new gas in it and tried to run it, but it just wasn't happy with it. So, sorry for you guys. Uh, we're just looking at the freaking table for there uh, for a minute, but the petcock I'm talking about is here. See how nasty it is in there. Oof, nasty. We got a lot of the fuel out that wasn't like super diluted or anything, but yeah, we're gonna have to flush this thing. Okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna take this little hose here that I used earlier that didn't fit, and uh, I'm going to put it on the bottom here where all this fuel's coming out. Try to clamp this fuel off and uh yeah we're gonna put some vinegar in it and let it sit overnight so that's what we're gonna do now we need to get it done i just poured this crap all over myself the reason i want to put this on here is because i want the vinegar to, vinegar excuse me to come down here and set in this thing overnight too because that thing is disgusting i sprayed it out with some brake clean all sorts of ew and nasty stuff came out of there we gotta find a bolt to put in that short enough Maybe this one will do it. Come over here, see if we can pop that sucker right on there. Just like so. And see if it'll see if it'll leak. Are you gonna do anything? Thread, 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 are you gonna leak? It kind of looks like it to me. Oh yeah, we'll put a zip tie on that and it should shut it down. I'll be right back with some vinegar after I put the zip tie on that. We're gonna pour it in here almost overflowing and then uh, yeah, see what happens tomorrow, I guess. Okay, we got our zip tie on there and uh, we're gonna have to hurry or it's gonna start raining pretty good. It still leaks just skosh, but it's no big deal. Who cares? I'll put a uh, drain pan under it in a minute. I'm just gonna leave it just like this overnight. I might actually elevate it on the pan on the table. Um, we'll put the cat back on, but if we don't hurry, it's about to be in rain city. So we need to hurry up and uh, we'll come do this stuff tomorrow. All right, here we are back in the shop, day two on the bike here. Back here to check this tank. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we got in here. Hopefully nothing too crazy. Got a little bit of floaties. Hopefully that cleans it out pretty good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get something to catch all this stuff in besides this. So I can hopefully get it back into uh, say, one of the vinegar dills. So maybe I can use it again later on uh, the other tank for the Dodge. So I don't have to waste so much vinegar on that. So I guess that's all for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and try to find a way to take this off. Probably get like a hose for the uh, petcock or maybe even man i don't know something we're gonna figure it out okay stop asking me so many questions i don't know just kidding see if i can show you what's going on in here you see that in there and that's what we're dealing with yeah hopefully the uh vinegar is going to do its job i'm gonna pour the rest of this vinegar in here it's not a lot uh and now I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of these BBs in here and just kind of shake it around for a while. Uh, 
Then when I get done making all that hellacious noise and stuff, then we'll pour it back out, get all the BBs out, and go from there. So, ain't nothing to it just to do it. Let's go ahead and figure it out. Okay, so we just went ahead, and I knocked my phone off. We just went ahead and uh, finished shaking this thing around with those BBs in there. And like I said, the reason I went with them because they're magnetized. I can just stick it down there and try to get all of them out if they're stuck. I very seriously doubt it. These things are really small. They're cheap. Or they used to be anyways and they get in all these little nooks and crannies that a bunch of bigger stuff can't do uh it's really easy you just shake it around a little bit i'm gonna go ahead and turn my phone on here show you guys the difference what it looks like now so we're gonna go ahead and take the rest of this fluid out of here which is just the vinegar but just a few seconds of beating that thing around and maybe maybe three minutes okay and it already looks like this so that's gonna be pretty darn good um we can try beating some more out of it just a little bit i gotta go to the house in just a second uh tell my mom some things but yeah man that worked pretty good so what i'm gonna do is uh when i get back i'm gonna go ahead and drain the rest of this stuff out of here and uh put it in this jug here be recycled or reused later and uh we should be good to go put it back on there and make sure the peacock and everything works fine uh it is still kind of or it wasn't wanting to come out we might have to take that off and clean it again with some brake clean like we did the first time, but it's no big deal. We can figure that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff done. Be right back in just a second. Make sure this stuff works. All right. Well, so far, this is what we got out. I don't know if you guys can see the discolor there, but it's supposed to be clear. It's supposed to look just like this one. And it obviously does not. Now, I spilled this everywhere, as you can tell. This is some more of that crap that came out of it because I cleaned that before I started this. Now, it's not as clean as it could be. It could be a little cleaner. I hope you can see in there. I'll get my phone and see. See if I can show you what's going on in here. See that in there? And that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, hopefully the uh, vinegar is gonna do its job. I'm gonna pour the rest of this vinegar in here. It's not a lot. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and pour some of these BBs in here and just kind of shake it around for a while. Uh, then when I get done making all that hellacious noise and stuff, then we'll pour it back out, get all the BBs out, and go from there. So, ain't nothing to it just to do it. Let's go ahead and figure it out. Okay, we got all the BBs out of there. You can tell by shaking it around, but let me show you in here if I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Well, you can kind of see it in there. It's still a little dirty. Uh, I think they said that you could uh, use a little dish soap put in there. We might try that. But I want to tell you guys, I was having trouble getting something out of there with this magnet. I was like, what in the world? I could not get it. Well, finally, I saw what it was in there. And it was this. I'm not too sure what this went to. Maybe a petcock or something. Or a fuel shutter offer, whatever you want to call it. But I had to fish it out with this thing. And it's about the hardest thing I've ever done. It wasn't too hard. I just, I spent more time shaking it, trying to get with this thing, and it was a BB, than I uh, really needed to, to just get a freaking piece of wire and get it out of there. What I'm saying is, if you can't get it out of there, it might not be magnet to tie. It's magnetic, yeah, might not be that. Uh, just look in there, slosh around, you know, put a light in there like I did, sweat too much, shaking everything around, getting it all over everywhere. That's fine. Uh, now I guess the second step is I'm going to take some uh, soapy water, put in there, shake it around, rinse it out real good, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to do after that, so I guess we're just going to go with that, maybe coat it with a little oil or something just to be safe so it doesn't uh, rust again, and uh, I'm going to try to put this uh, back on here, but unfortunately one of the seals for this actually wound up breaking, which is uh, this bad boy right here, and I have no idea how to get another one so we're gonna have to figure that out as well have to call the owner do stuff like that uh before i do that i'm just gonna clean the rest of this up put the bbs up and you know get back to what i was doing maybe even think about doing some brake stuff i don't know yet depends on what time it is okay so we went ahead we poured a little bit of soap in here dumped some water and sloshed around dumped it all out on the ground and uh, i've been spraying it with air for a while what did i do with my there it is there is a lot. I hope you guys can see down in here. But it's... Oh, man. 
I wish you guys could see in there. It's pretty nice. It's not the beautifulest thing in the world. Let's see if I can get the right light. Beautiful. Beautiful. See down in there? Look at that. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but man, does this stuff really do the trick. So, if you guys ever have a tank that you guys need clean, a little vinegar, a little soap and water, uh, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to let this set and dry overnight, because it's got a little bit of water, even though I blew it out, uh, I'm going to spray some uh, PB Blaster in here, shake it around, maybe a little oil or something, uh, just get it coated so it doesn't flash rust immediately, you know what I mean? Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get that coated up real quick and let it set overnight to dry. Tomorrow we'll throw the tank on and then uh, try to get some uh, some fuel in it. I still got some of the fuel I pulled out of it that's not super bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this thing at least fuel wise buttoned up tomorrow and then uh, worry about the caliper that I think's bad because everything else has been changed. And I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet besides just take it off and look at it. So we might just take it off and see if the, the piston seized in the caliper which I don't know anything's possible it looked really clean but as soon as i opened the tank then something was kind of wrong so anyways tomorrow all right here we are next day right back into the shop and uh i went ahead and let the tank just sit over here uh on the frame overnight i'm gonna break this up and see what it looks like in here i got my phone charged a little bit so we can see what's going on in the tank here let me open it one two why are you not why are you there there we go it's kind of hard to see especially since you got you know the relay of the gopro but it definitely looks a lot better in there see if i can shine the light in there and let you see anyways yeah it's real hard to see in there i wish i had one of those uh whatever they're called the little snake camera deals and i don't i really need to get one but man they're just too expensive uh what i'm gonna go ahead and do though is uh, get all the lines ready to hook up and uh, throw the fuel that I got out of it. We're going to strain it a little bit so it doesn't get all that gunk right back in it. And then we're going to put it back in the tank and see if we can get this thing to run. I'm going to have to call the owner of the bike and see what he's going to want us to do about the caliper because before I start, I'm really leaning towards its caliper. If not, I have no idea what it is, but I'm assuming that's what it is. I want to know if he's going to want to get a new caliper or if he's gonna want me to try to fix this one, I'm not too sure. Um, we'll dive into that when we can. I'm trying to get this video out before drill this weekend, uh, so I might have to cut this one short and do a second part to it, not sure yet. Uh, we'll see, but at least let's see if we can get this thing to run for now. Um, I know I've been having drill and AT a lot. Um, it's just how the cookie crumbles, you know what I mean? Uh, but regardless, let's see if we can get this thing uh, running real quick. Okay. So we got our gas jug here with our awesome shirt filter on it. And I went ahead and actually bolted the tank back on there. Keep in mind, uh, I think this one on this Cleveland Cycle Works was actually longer than the rear one. So yours could be different, they could be the same, probably smaller because of how small the neck is here and how wide it is up there. Uh, but just so you guys know, and you don't have to really work or think about it, you can just do that. Now what I'm gonna do is take this jug here. Of course, heaven forbid, I'd be able to do this one-handed if this safety feature wasn't on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it back in the tank and let this kind of filter as much as I can out of it. It's not I'm not trying to filter a whole lot, just a little bit. Uh, I already went ahead and tried to strain this before. So uh, yeah, we're just taking another preventive measure and uh, this guy should be just fine. He just put it in there. Um, it was just clogged up. So let's put it in there. It is probably gonna rust again, but if you put a little oil in there ever so often or just take care of it, it should be okay. So uh, if he ever needs to clean it again, we can do it for him or we can tell him how we did it and go from there. Let's just go ahead and throw the fuel in there, see if we can get it to run a little bit and then move to the brakes. Okay, so we got the fuel in here. Just like every great mechanic, you have a wonderful idea. It doesn't get executed properly. So you throw that in the garbage and do what you said you weren't gonna do. So what I did was take that fuel, try to use the filter, filter didn't work lawnmower outside filter didn't work threw the filter in the trash and just dumped it in there because i was tired of waiting on it and it was coming out like a you know a pee every two seconds so put it in there still looked pretty good i was watching it while i was flowing in there fuel looked pretty clear i really hate those gas tanks do not i can't stand the new epa crap especially i mean those are a little better with the push button on the back but these oh, i hate them anyways i'm sitting here watching for leaks and stuff i haven't really seen anything i haven't opened it 
I'm gonna put the cap back on here. Cap's on. Open the petcock up. See if anything comes out of it. Nothing. Huh. Okay. Wonder what we might do there. A little shake here. Nothing. Wonder what happens if we take this line off, if it's gonna do the same crap that it did before. Yep. Uh, why is that? I wonder if that filter's clogged up and it's stopping it. What I might do, shut that back off, try to get a different filter and uh, run a different filter on it, see if that might fix the problem. Give me just a second, I'm gonna see if I can try that real quick. Okay, we're still doing the same thing with no fuel coming in these lines. I did go ahead and short it up because it was still kind of kinking a little bit. Uh, and I did change the filter again. So, no fuel. I bet what's going on inside this carburetor, the bowl is either stuck, the needle and seat's uh, stuck, so I might take the bottom of the carb off and uh, see if I can clean the needle and seat up, let it open, and that should pour fuel in. Right now I think it's vacuum shut because it's just sealed closed. All right, so here we are. Carbs off, it was two nuts here that keeps the carb on. A screw on the back that's for the, the throttle cable, or I'm sorry, the choke cable, because this here should be the throttle. Yeah, that's the throttle chokes on the other side. Um, this is the bottom of the carburetor. And if you look down in there, yes, it's kind of dirty. So we're gonna hit that with some carb clean, but watch this right here. So the little uh, accelerator pump in this carburetor does work. So that's not too gummed up. The fuel, remember, ever since I've had this here, no fuel has been in this car. So there was fuel still setting in here, which me, leads me to believe that the little needle and seat that should be right here on this float is gummed up. We're gonna take a look at the bottom of that in a second. I'm trying not to pull the carb completely off the bike because I don't wanna have to reset everything. I'm trying to leave it exactly how it was. So, we're gonna get some uh, brake clean, spraying the bottom of this, get it moved around. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the bottom of here and try to clean this needle and seat up and the little pickups and everything. And uh, hopefully it'll allow fuel to flow back in this carburetor. Um, the float should be set right, but once we take this needle and seat out, if we do, we're gonna have to reset the float. Um, to reset the float, I had a video on my Dodge, but uh, basically you want, when you set this thing in water, you want the float set level. So I'll have to remember how to do that, or maybe you know one of you can tell me if you remember. And then uh, we'll get into that. It kind of looks to me like the needle is moving. You see right here, right above my finger, that little dildo's moving. That should be the needle, it should be picking up. But man, this thing's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna try to clean it. That's enough talking. I'm gonna get some par uh, brake clean, parts clean or whatever. We're gonna spray some in here and get this stuff cleaned up pretty quick. Okay, I use the rest of my brake cleaners just spraying in a bunch of these little orifices here. These two here, and then on the bottom, and then up, up under here where that little needle and seat is. And I use some air to blow it out. So, I already tested this, but I want you to watch that fuel line when I open it up. See that fuel come out of there right in here and then in turn it'll drip down in here where the fuel is supposed to come out so hopefully that's all it needed was a little cleaning now it is still pretty dirty you can tell uh, but we'll uh, we'll try to fix that and you can see where the fluid level was just right here that white compared to black um, i'm gonna go ahead and clean this out the rest of the way it still has some of this brake cleaner in here and then uh, we'll blow it out, see if we can fix some of this stuff in there. And then uh, put the car back on there, put it back together, and see if it'll pull fuel like it's supposed to. All right, boys and girls. Remember, fuel and parts slash brake cleaner makes rubber gaskets expand, okay? Now, please, Dwight, if you're watching this, I swapped the, uh, the seal from this bad boy right here. That looks uh, looks just like so. I swapped it out of the old one and put it on the new one for you. And I'm gonna be putting this one back on the old one if I can. And I'm gonna tell you, but just so you know, okay? I didn't skip you out, I, I'm telling you, all right? But for everybody else, please, remember, uh, before you start spraying crap with parts cleaner and brake clean and all that other junk, uh, the rubber gaskets are gonna expand. So you're gonna have a hard time putting that back on unless you got a new one. 
or an old one, whichever. Uh, but yeah, come take a look at this with me. Move all this junk out of the way. Watch the fuel for me. Boom, there it is. Now we gotta make sure this thing doesn't overflow. And it'll tell you, because it'll start pouring everywhere. All right, watching, watching, watching. Don't see fuel leaks anywhere, don't see. Make sure you come in here and you open this flap so you can see it in there. See, you see what I'm talking about? I hope so. Make sure you open it up, do all the cool stuff. And I have to uh, do some line work there. Never mind, we just fixed it, I think. Um, anyways, I don't see any leaks. We are uh, gonna start this in just a second. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this uh, carburetor back for him. And uh, yeah, we should be in business with the carburetor. We'll see in just a second. I'm not gonna worry about putting this on here. Uh, believe it or not, this top half of the carburetor, not the bowl where all the fuel sets, put it out, it looks cleaner than the old one. But this one should work. Okay, it's just been setting. Please, friendly reminder as well, before I put this back together. When you let uh, lawnmowers, motorcycles, and well, whatever else you got, set over the winter uh turn the fuel shut off off start and run it until all the fuel runs out of the carburetor or just you know take the bowl off pour all the fuel out don't let all the fuel set in there it gums it up you'll have to get a new carburetor and all that other junk and then uh you'll be right back to doing what i'm doing right now also you can take fuel out of the tank that that'll that'll help too anyways that's all i want to tell you a little psa announcement okay so we did have a leak for just a second and uh, I was tapping on this here and that uh, piece of carburetor the what I was telling you was in between the float the needle and seat uh, it was stuck open and it was just overflowing out of the carb so I tapped on it with a screwdriver a little bit and it, it closed off so it's still a little gummed up uh, not a whole lot wish I could have cleaned it a little more but I didn't have enough brake clean um, anyways it stopped the leaking so what I think we can do now is you can see in here the accelerator pump is actually squirting fuel so that's working now we can turn the ignition on step back make sure she's in neutral that's what that green light's for and start it a little punk up again make sure we're still getting fluid all right Let's give it a tap again, make sure we didn't get stuck on closed. Let's do it on the other side where the accelerator is, or not the accelerator, but the needle and seat. Give it a little tap of rooski. See if we'll get some more fuel in here. Tap it some more. What was that? Did we leak a little bit? I don't know. There's some more fuel. seems as though we're only getting enough fuel for when I hold the throttle open so maybe because we're getting fuel now maybe this carburetor needs adjusted a little bit and it looks like it's a flathead right behind here the fuel air mixture or the I'm not even sure what it would be on this but it's also blocked off so I'm not real sure what that's about. I know you guys are super close right there. I might just skip through that. But we might have to do a little bit of tinkering with the carburetor and uh, see why it's not doing the thing. I don't understand what that's about. 
Are we still getting fuel? It don't look like it. Huh. It don't look like we're getting fuel here. Well, let's see if we wind up running out. Give it another little turn. Are we not squirting anymore? Yeah, we are. We seem to continuously get fuel. I mean, it's not running out. So that must mean the needle and seat's doing its job. Uh, it's stopping the fuel and only taking it when it needs it. Hope you guys can still hear me because this thing is super loud for no reason. Um, what we're gonna have to do is make sure that this carburetor is actually adjusted properly which who freaking knows but it looks to me like the only idle air mixture is behind stuff and of course it's behind the throttle cable and everything so that would mean we'd have to take that off just to mess with it um i can't say i'm a wizard at this stuff but i do know that you need to get it warmed up enough to actually run right and uh that that could take in itself a good minute and then once it's warmed up then you gotta adjust it i think it's all the way in and then back it off let's say a turn and a quarter and then ever so slightly turn it until it you know sounds like crap and then turn it a little bit back to where it was and that should be fine but i don't know if these are the same as cars and stuff i don't know um i'll have to do some looking but i don't know how i'm going to i don't know how i'm going to get in there uh Ooh, ow, 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 ow. Did you know exhaust is hot? Ow! What a dumb thing to do. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can mess with this a little bit. I can't promise you guys that I'm gonna be able to get it done. I don't know too much about bikes, but yeah, carburetor's carburetor, I hope. Let's see if we can get it to act right. Yeah? How's it going, everybody? I have no idea where we left off, but I do know what I did a little bit of after I got off of the, uh, the camera here uh, we were looking at a coil and I'm pretty sure what we left off doing was just a little carburetor so trying to get to start it wouldn't really do much anyways the coil winded up burning up I don't know if it was like an intermittent thing and that maybe that's why it wasn't uh, it wasn't allowing it to continue running I'm not real sure but I have a coil here I got it on Amazon it's a uh, two prong kind of setup you got the hot and your negative that you hook up and then this hooks right onto the bike right up under here no big deal so we're gonna go ahead and replace it and uh, I'm gonna take the bottom part of this carburetor off again clean the main jet and uh, a second one and uh, we should be should be good I'm hoping because uh, this thing's throwing me for a loop let me show you what we got going on here wind up taking the battery out just a little bit so I can hook up the jump box to it or the charging box whatever you want to call it and uh, I got it all hooked up and everything so we wouldn't have to use the little bitty thing I'm gonna head and change the plug wire of course it really don't matter um, but I did anyways just to make sure that wasn't the problem and we winded up um, messing up this coil here I guess um, this hanging here is just the uh, the horn for the bike it actually bolts right here We'll take care of that when we get the new coil back on there. But that's where we are. We still have only got this thing to start off of the uh, accelerator pump. And unless you're showering down on this thing, really getting after it, um, 
it ain't it ain't gonna continue running. So I'm gonna clean the needle and seat, pop the bowl off again, and uh, spill fuel everywhere, all that stuff. You'll see it. I've already seen it before. I'm gonna show you what I'm cleaning, and if I'm wrong on these parts, like you guys know what it is, and I don't, because I don't mess with it. This is the first time I've ever messed with this carburetor, but if you're like, hey, that ain't what that is, this is what it is, just let me know. Also, I got a neat little friend here I want to show you. Let me go ahead and turn my light on. You guys ever seen one of them? Hmm. Me either. For some reason he thought it was a good idea to get in my speaker box. I don't know why, but he did. Okay, so we got this new coil in here. Like I said, two wires. Hook it all up. Make sure it's grounded. And now we're gonna check for sparks. So you watch that. I'm gonna turn this key on here. Make sure we got some power up there. And you watch that spark plug out there and tell me if we got any spark. Oh, it don't look like that's got spark either. I might have to do some wiring diagnosis and see if we can trace down that hot wire back here see if it's getting uh, giving us some problems maybe a fuse blue or something maybe maybe we'd check in here and see okay so I just ripped the tank off here real quick and here's a better look at this coil in here now these wires that come off this coil go into this uh, this harness here harness or a wire cover whatever and it goes back down in here and into this box so um, we could have some wiring problem here we're still not getting any spark what I'm gonna do is when I trace these wires, we're gonna have to really pay attention to a yellow with a black. Let's see if you guys can see that in there, yellow with the black, and then a black ground wire. So we're gonna pay attention to both of those. And I got a cool little tester in there that'll tell me when I have continuity if I just hold it on there so I'm, I got the right wire. Um, I got a new tester the other day that might actually help us with this. Um, it's called a power probe. I've never used it, but we might try to figure it out. I'm gonna have to hop on the other side though, I think, to try to pop the thing open and you know see what's in there. I'm not too sure. Let's go ahead and see what we can get our hands uh, full of here. And uh, hopefully we can find it pretty quick because uh, wiring is not fun. All right, so we're gonna be testing ohms here, or I'm sorry, we're gonna make it beep because that's what I like to do is make it beep, which means continuity between this wire and the end of it there might work if you turn it on the right one well what is going on here now it'll work there continuity perfect and now if we want to test that black wire up there of course, this is the main hot that we were looking for, so we know it's in this jumbled mess of crap. And it plugs into this really weird looking box that I don't know the name of, which is probably some ignition source box. Not really sure. Anyways, the black wire, I'm gonna save you guys the time, is this one right here. Um, basically, all you'll do is the same thing. Uh, continuity, test for the fucking beepy, and then come up here and hold it on a black one. It'll beep at you. I'll just take my word for it and uh you'll be right on track but i'm hoping because we know the coil is good and it's acting the way it's supposed to i guess even though it's not the, what it's supposed to sorry about the dog anyways uh i went ahead and tested this fuse too this fuse is fine um there were some of these connectors in here that were loose but none of which actually mattered. I'm assuming these are all like lights and flashers and stuff. And uh, I think these are the flasher relays and stuff like that. Not too sure, but I think so. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to figure out what this little box does, because I'm pretty sure this is the problem. And then we might see if we can do like a little jumper or something to make it work, because right now it just ain't doing nothing. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, well, believe it or not, I think this is a CDI or something box, basically an igniter box. 
I don't know what CDI stands for, and I really don't know what an igniter box would do besides tell your coil when to go boom, boom, and make fuel, do fuel, uh, you know, combustion stuff. So uh, this looks to be like a four to, could potentially be a three pin, but it's actually two. So there's four pins on this side, two pins on this side. Um, I'm gonna do a little research on this. I don't know too much about it, but I'm hopefully gonna figure out how to test it so I can show you guys how I'm gonna test it. And uh, we're gonna see if this bad boy's bad, because, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. We're gonna figure that out in just a second. Let's see if I can uh, look into what it does and then try to you know, project that to you guys, because I don't know what I'm doing. So, we'll be right back. Okay, so we did a little bit of looking stuff up on this uh, CDI box. Still don't know what CDI stands for. I looked at it, I forgot it, because basically it's an electronic pulsing signal to the coil that uh you know makes fire happen and uh there's two different types there's ac and dc i'm going to figure out which one it is now but basically the biggest thing that you could do is this bottom pin down here uh you're going to plug it all back up together and it's going to be this connector here okay there's only one thing coming out of it and you just need to make sure that it's ac dc and uh yeah we'll figure that out in a minute I'm not really sure what in the world is going on, but we'll figure that out. So I'm gonna get my multimeter. I wanna test to see if there's any like power at the uh, at the coil. And uh, I mean, that could tell us right there, but it, I think it's pretty intermittent. Before it was like on and then off, and I think maybe this is going out. Um, but I wanna be sure before I order something else, because maybe that old, old coil wasn't bad, and I'm, I just jumped to a conclusion. But it cost me quite a bit of time. Like, I was out waiting for a part for, you know, four days, so maybe this time don't jump straight to the coil, even though you test it, and it, it's kind of odd. But I don't know too much about bikes, so I'm allowed to, mis you know, make a mistake here and there. Um, anyways... I'm gonna hook this thing back up, see if I can test a few things, and then get back with you on. Okay, so I have it on AC-DC volts right here, and I'm gonna be watching this to see if anything will happen when I uh, turn the key on. And I have it hooked up to the main power, and then I got it on a, a negative. Or actually, I'm gonna be holding it on a negative, because, you know, it's over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on. See our light up there, so you know it's on, and we're gonna go ahead and hit that negative and nothing. Now I can go ahead and turn this over. Of course, I've already done this because uh, I can't do it with you know one hand not being operational. Uh, but I went ahead and turned it over, and it stayed at zero. So that means we're not getting any power to the coil. Now what we can figure out really quick is if we take this power lead off here and we put it on the back of this one. Kind of let it sit in there and then we'll find our okay so we got our main lead to the only wire which is going to be that bottom one there so there's one power wire there's two connectors but only one power wire and then there's a green wire down here that should be this top right one there so go ahead i'm gonna uh I'm going to plug this bad boy in here, and I want you guys to watch what that says right here for me. What's that say right there? 12 volts DC. So now we know we're getting direct current, and then we're going to you know, use that knowledge, because if that said AC, we're going to uh, need an AC one. But that's how we found out if we need an AC or DC uh, CDI. So now that we know, we can go order the correct one and be set back like 13 more weeks waiting on it because the only place you can get it is on uh, Amazon. Okay, well, I normally don't like to say this, but I might be a little bit, uh, you know. But I will admit when I'm wrong. Okay, sometimes, not all the time. I did all that... Uh, wiring stuff or not i mean the more you know but uh the, the kill switch was on yep it that little little thing up on the bike there yeah it was on so yeah no spark 
But I, I do think there might have been something wrong with that coil, but if not, you know, he just got a new one. I'm not gonna, you know, make him pay for it. Especially if I was just stupid enough to hit the kill switch or whatever and it just go off. And, uh, yeah. We probably could have worked on it for a couple of days or something like that. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put all this electrical stuff back up in the box and uh, put the box back together and then I'm gonna take the bottom of the carburetor off and clean the jet out of it like we originally planned so we're right back on track we don't have to wait all the time but maybe i'm a little dense maybe i don't know anyways back to what we we're doing sorry about that you guys at least we know uh, more about the cdi and everything we know how to test it and figure out which one we need compared to which one we don't and yeah the more you know um but next time you know, check the kill switch, check the check the small stuff. That's what I like to preach all the time. Check the easy stuff, the stuff that wouldn't make sense if it would fit, you know. But I didn't check it, so maybe next time. Okay, so we got this uh, box put back together here. I guess you can call it a box, whatever. Uh, we got it all put back together, all the wiring put in there, and uh, done what it needed to be done. So now that we are... Uh, Back to messing with this carburetor again. Went ahead and put the tank back on, all that. And uh, I tried to make that a bit shorter so it didn't look so kinked. And now, since we got all the fuel back in it, because I opened it like a dummy, now we can take the bowl off and throw all the fuel on the ground for the thousandth time. And then see if we can take that jet out of there and spray it and see if that'll do something. I don't know. Let's figure it out together, yeah? Okay, so we got the carburetor pull out again. You've seen this a thousand times. What you haven't seen is this little guy right here. I think this is the what feeds the fuel to the main like jet portion of the car. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is uh, spray some brake clean up. And I'm gonna shoot some air through it. Make sure it's uh, doing what it needs to do. And I'm gonna do the same thing to uh, that one maybe here. And then maybe this one here. Kind of hard to see in there. Of course, let me see if I can. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. Spray some brake clean in it and, you know, just clean it. And then we're going to see if we can dial it in again. And hopefully then we'll be good. All right. So I went ahead and clean these two up. I can't mess these up. Yes, you can mess these up. But we're not going to, okay? We've already messed up other things. Let's not do it again. I went ahead and cleaned these up. And I'm pretty sure what normally clogs on these are these little portholes on them. There's a, the, like the main jet and then another one, I guess. I don't fucking know how these things work. One goes right here and the other one right next to it. The smallest one being on this side, the biggest one on this one. So, I'm also going to get some brake cream brake clean spray in there but what I did for these is a shot brake clean through them oh getting a phone call one second all right sorry about the phone call but what I did to clean these is sprayed brake clean through both sides I went ahead and put them on the uh, wire wheel over there and cleaned them up and uh, sh shot some air through them um, I'm not gonna do anything crazy on this one I'm just gonna shoot some brake clean through those and then screw them back in there and see if we can get this thing to act right Anyways, that's uh, it for now, I guess, and uh, we'll see you on half in a minute. Alright. We're all put back together. We got a new ignition coil, which I'm going to assume, or pretend, that uh, we needed. And uh, carburetor's been cleaned and put back together, and now I guess the only thing we can do is turn it on and see what happens. So, I guess that's what we're going to do. See if just cleaning that really helps. Let's see if I can squirt some fuel in it. Watch this. Perfect. Well, it lasted longer than before. A little bit of fuel in there. A little bit more. I wonder if that needle's stuck again. Sets. 
too much too much air maybe I think we're getting too much air folks but I didn't have to hammer down on it that time Let's see what happened Less air. Huh. You let any of the, uh, any of that choke off there, it ain't happy with it. But I mean that's the best we've got out of it so far. Alright, me and dad came up here and fixed this thing up between uh, the, either the coil being bad and then that switch because I talked to dad about that uh, shut off switch. He was saying that he was messing with that coil before flicking that switch on and off and I guess he left it off but he said regardless of what position it was in it wouldn't uh, fire so I guess the coil still was bad. I'm just going to pack it up and send it back to him anyways. He can do with it whatever he wants. Uh, but. I went ahead, me and, well, Dad's the one that showed me, but what I thought was for that uh, vacuum gauge for when you're like testing their stuff, for some reason there wasn't a hose on it. I guess that might have been a lot of what uh, their problem was, but when you turn the key on, because we messed with the idle screw and stuff, but when you turn the key on, you start it now. Of course it sounds weird because it's one of them little single cylinder units that are just, I don't know, you're not used to them. Alright, it's the next day and we're over here working on the bike again. Uh, if you guys couldn't tell, we got this thing to run and do its job like it's supposed to. Basically it was a combination of a lot of things, whether it be a uh, loss of spark, depending on if that was just me, you know, messing up the, the switch, which I don't think so, but you never really know. Uh, or the fuel tank, the fuel sending problem with the petcock, the jets being dirty, and also the massive vacuum leak that we had. So it could be any of that. Uh, but regardless, we did get it running, and we're looking at a pretty good bike. We just need to look into the brakes a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this camera around. I want to show you guys the rear of this bike. The reason that I need to move the wheel back is because I can't get to that bolt on the top of the caliper right there. I need to take the caliper off to see if the pistons, the two pistons or one piston, whichever it is, I'm pretty sure two, is seized or not. But to do that and move it all back, we're gonna have to loosen these two uh, nuts here on this long uh, piece of all thread or bolt or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, anyways, you can see these little tick marks here. We need to make sure that all this lines right back up to the way it was, okay? So we're going to get like a, a, a marker. We're going to mark that up. I'm going to go ahead and grab a... I'm, I was going to try to mark this, but it would be pointless because as soon as we run that bolt down there, all that would just disintegrate, I bet. We can see if it will mark up and uh, go from there. It is a... What is this? What do we have here? 11 16 wrench. And we're going to need two of them because we've got to break this one free and then that one. So we're going to run this one out and then that one behind it. That should allow this... To move back which would in turn uh, move the wheel back I think I'm not really sure how it works we might actually have to pop the chain off to do this I really don't want to do that so we're gonna try to get away with it uh, we might try to move it this way maybe I don't know what that would you know hurt I'm not really sure we'll see what we can do let's go ahead and take a look on this side too it looks like this is about the same contraption over here for some reason this isn't as long of a piece of like all thread bolt to uh, welded whatever this uh, dilly mubobber is there. Uh, so we'll have to figure that out. But I mean it doesn't look too crazy hard I guess. I just got to figure out how to do it. Anyways, 
Let me go grab this marker real quick. We're gonna mark some things up. I'm gonna use a, uh, a Sharpie, either a gray or black. Probably the gray one for the black and then the black one for the gray. You know how that works. There's all sorts of different colors. I don't have any paint markers because they're expensive. So we'll, uh, we'll be right back. Well, believe it or not, our snake friend did leave. Bob has been evicted. We didn't kill him or anything. We just kind of let him do his thing. He uh, he eventually came out of that little speaker setup I got over there, and he went on about his way. So hopefully he's out there killing all the mice and stuff that I hate being in the shop. And uh, yeah, we might see Bob again. Hopefully, I'm not too sure what kind of snake it was. It had some weird little pattern on it, like a diamond black snake underbelly white. You know, I, can, I don't know. I'm not a snake expert. Anyways, we got these two sharpies here, the gray and the black, and then. Uh, like I told you before, I'm just gonna take this gray Sharpie and I'm gonna pop the lid on it and be like, okay, I need to be right here. And you might not be able to see that mark, but I sure can. That's all we need, nothing too crazy. Here comes the pooch. There he is. Haha, <laughs> what's up little buddy, come on. Oh, you're all wet. Why are you all wet, doggy? Doggy? Alright, and uh, I'm going to attempt to mark this here. If you really wanted to, we could count the threads on this thing if you want to be super meticulous. Or I'm sure there's some way of doing this better than what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do it. So, anyways, I'm going to see if I can mess with this a little bit. At least learn this side before I try to tell you because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, so we did loosen all these on both sides up. And I wound up loosening this main uh, bolt here that goes all the way through the wheel that the real wheel rides on. See, it's loose here. And all I did was just kind of move the bike a little bit one way. I was thinking about using the jack, but I didn't really do it. I just moved the bike one way and kind of hit it. The wheel moved forward. You can see there's that old mark where we need to be. And then there's where we are now. But you can also see how the wheel has like moved one direction so that's why that's important is to keep this wheel line in line and uh for now we're going to be able to get to these little uh, allen bolts here which is good so that means we can pull the caliper off real quick and see if we can see what's going on with it just a little background real quick i don't remember if i told you guys why i'm jumping straight to the caliper uh but when i was testing all this stuff see i already tried bleeding the brakes at the caliper there's fluid there's no air coming out of it the reservoirs full um, all this stuff from the reservoir all the way to the caliper has already been changed so it's got a new like steel braided coated line it's got a new uh, reservoir new master cylinder everything um, it's all changed the only thing that's not changed is the uh, the caliper itself so I'm gonna see if I can uh, get that off there and I'm really thinking that that piston back there is seized up so hopefully that's it because if not then I I have no idea and I'm just gonna have to tell them that I, I just don't know it's one of those things that uh maybe a faulty part I'm not too sure it's a uh, no real way to tell it's really tricky when you buy new parts you know what I mean so we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do all right there's a couple pieces of this thing if you guys have never taken uh, bike brakes apart like I have, uh, you got two main uh, bolts here, which are the Allen keys that you're gonna need to unscrew these bad things. And uh, basically they ride straight through both of these um, pads all the way through. And uh, once they're tight, they're tight, you know, you can't, uh, can't take them out. It's not like a car, how they have clips and stuff. Now you have this that goes over all of it which is like a the slide like you'd see on a car, which I'm sure you need grease on this bad puppy right here with my finger on it there. We'll figure that out. And then you also have this little like, a, I don't know what you want to call it. Basically, it just goes over here, tightens that down, keeps that slide on there, I guess. I don't know. Don't know brakes on a bike, but we're figuring it out. Now, these two pistons are what I'm thinking is gonna be froze up. And we're going to get in here and look at them, but I'm going to take a C-clamp, put it on here, like so, 
And we're gonna clamp that bad boy down and see if it'll get any action out of it. Okay, so we got these depressed. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit that pedal right here, see what happens. Yeah, it's still not moving. I'm gonna get some spray, spray in there, or uh, something. See if we can get the pistons to come free, I guess. Now I know it might seem a little counterproductive to have done all this and then try that. Excuse me. Uh, but I figured, you know, if this looked new and someone changed it already, maybe not take their word considering it's just, you know, still not working. Um, but what I'm finding is, which I didn't see before because there's a boot on it, so let me show you guys. So. We've already got the caliper off and all that junk, but I went ahead and took this little um, master cylinder off of here, and when I popped it free, right under here with this electronic crap plugs do, there's actually a leak. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change this out for a different one, just because. Um, but I wonder if that was a problem the whole time. The reason I didn't see it is because there was this boot over it, and. I mean, I should have seen it, but it was such a small leak. I don't know how to, I don't know how anyone would see that. You know what I mean? It's so easy to look over, but maybe that's what it was the whole time is, you know, a, a leaky master cylinder, maybe. But you know, the more you know about bike brakes, the better. So who cares if I took it apart, I'll put it back together. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off and try to get the, uh, the new one new one on there and uh, hopefully it does better we'll see all right so i went ahead and i got a new uh, bolt and some of them uh, washers to keep this thing from leaking and uh, also i went ahead and put this in here now inside underneath there's rubber boot you have to lift the boot up to take this off there's a uh, little clip one of them little c clips you have to pull together with one of them fancy toe right there Anyway, so you gotta pull it together, take that off, and then do the same thing and get back in there. It's a little tricky, but uh, you'll get it. No worries. If I can do it, you can do it. You go ahead and you'll put this on here. There's a rubber thing underneath here. Sure, don't really know what it does. I guess it comes from the reservoir in. Whatever. One little screw to keep that on there, and then you got back here where the line goes, and then you should be good to go. So, let's see if we can put this back on here, get about the same, like, a. Uh, roundabout stuff going on and then see if it'll do any better and hopefully it doesn't leak and cause problems all right so we went ahead and we got that back on there of course it's hard to see but it's on there and it'll work now i'm going to take the vice grip that i clamped on there to shut that line off which is kind of working kind of didn't um, i'm going to take that off so we can get fluid going and we'll put some more fluid back in there <clears throat> and uh, i'm going to pump this thing up try to bleed it now mind you all this stuff is going to be uh it's gonna have air in it so we're gonna have to bleed this for a little bit nowhere near as long as a vehicle but at least a little bit i still have to plug uh these two um for some reason this thing has some electric electrical crap going to it not really sure why i did put it back on there i don't know if it goes to this uh, uh master cylinder or not i don't really care uh what came off there is going back on there we're gonna put it back on there put the boot back on there uh i sprayed it with some brake clean just so I know uh, if any fluid's coming out of it. Now I did change, uh, it was like a copper washer. These have like a little rubber insert in them. Um, so hopefully it'll seal it a lot better than what it was. Um, and we shouldn't have any air in the system. If that was a problem, the caliper will move. If not, then I'm willing to bet yet again that it is the caliper. I'm hoping this will fix it because I can't really do much besides kind of let the caliper sit and hopefully it comes back around. Um, so hopefully this fixes it. Now, let me go ahead and uh, pump this up, put the wires on there, and then we'll be back and I'll show you if it moved or not. And if not, then I really don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, well, it's been a couple hours. Uh, we had some trips and stuff to go on, but uh, we came back, we worked on some stuff. As you can tell, everything else is put up behind me. We're actually done with it. I have no idea what we did. It, it just started working. Um, we were bleeding it and bleeding it, bleeding it. I changed the uh, master cylinder and stuff. We kept putting fluid in it. All the works. And then uh, I have me and my dad came up here. I asked him to help me with it. He was, you know, helping me do it. Me and him were both puzzled and then I don't know where it worked. So I don't know what we did. Uh, I would have loved to have showed it, but I didn't want to try taking it back apart and put it back together and it not work again. So you're going to have to take my word on it. I'm going to go on a test ride in just a second. And uh, when I come back, 
that should be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate every single one of you. And uh, as always, you guys have a good day.